Welcome back to The Living Flip, where my daughter Julie and Josh, her fiance, are buying this house and they're going to fix it up while they live here. So last time we talked about the preparations for their certificate of occupancy. Well, uh, this time I've got good news and bad news. The good news is they closed on the house, and so it is actually theirs now. The bad news is they can't live in it yet. They just got a permit to close, to transfer title, but not actually to live here. So they still need to get the certificate of occupancy. And if you remember, I said the whole concept of a living flip was that you go through three phases of home ownership. One is make it livable, two is make it lovable, and three is make it profitable. So we are still working on them making it livable. It's not livable until you have a certificate of occupancy. So that's what we're taking care of today. Now the issues that they failed for were not all that bad. Some of them were, there were some random smoke detectors still left in the bedrooms. They wanted them taken down, which was easy. We did that. But there were some other situations that were kind of strange. There were some holes in the master bedroom walls, as well as uh, an outlet cover was missing. Right, and here we had two issues. One of them was there was no plate on this outlet. So go ahead and put that one on. The other issue were these holes. There's a hole up there and there's a hole down there. And because there's a cable, I can only assume that this was where the TV was hanging on the wall. Maybe there was a shelf here and I don't, I don't know. I can't tell. All I know is we've got to fix the holes. So we're just going to cover them for now. Can you cover up the whole thing? That's good. Yeah. Straightness doesn't count right now. And we'll put a blank on the top. Now at the time of the certificate of occupancy inspection, there was a padlock on the pool gate, so he couldn't test it. It has to be a self-closing latch. But once they got it, the keys, they could take the padlock off and they were finding that it wasn't gonna operate anyway. All right, so what's the problem with the pool gate? Aha, let's see if we can take that off and lubricate it. All right, grab the can of WD-40, let's see. And we're just gonna spray the heck out of it. Yeah, there. Okay, and spray these things. And let's put some down in there. Good. I honestly don't think we need to replace it. I think it just was stuck. So the next problem was in the garage. There were voids in the ceiling and in the walls that evidently if there's a fire in the garage, it could spread very quickly throughout the house. So you need to fill those with a special kind of spray foam. Fill the whole thing up, that's fine. All right, we used almost an entire can of this fire block. And you can see, this is all the, the big voids that were in here. That one was a really big one. And of course, we got a little bit of a mess on the floor too, but that'll dry and we'll scrape it right off. The next issue was electrical. There was a GFI outlet in the kitchen that when you push the test button, it wouldn't shut off. All right, one of our problems that we failed for is this GFI. When you test it, it pops but it doesn't actually turn off. So we've got to replace it. All right, with the power off, let's take this apart. All right, this is a hodgepodge. Oh my gosh. All right, this one made me cringe. First of all, for those of you that are not into electrical work, please 
if you have a situation like this, you got to call an electrician. But uh, if there are any electricians watching, you guys are going to cringe. Uh, first of all, there was no wire nut on the grounds. They were just kind of twisted in there. And it wasn't like a wire nut fell off. I just didn't see one at all in the box. So that was blatantly bad. Secondly, there was an illegal splice in the box. And when I took off the electrical tape, you can see here how they just wrapped wires around other ones. And that's not allowed either. So things have to be connected via wire nuts. So when I was done, it was a nice clean installation. All the wires were connected to the new GFI and all the ground wires were connected underneath a wire nut. All right, outlet all replaced, works fine. Oh, that was a mess and wired wrong. So we had to correct that. Never know what you're gonna find when you buy an old house. All right, so the other problem we have is kind of electrical and it is this open space right here that uh, is considered a safety problem and so it needs to be covered. Now I went to my local Home Depot and found they have these things called filler plates but these are from Square D. They only carry the brands that they carry and it's big. It's like huge compared to that. So a little uh, creative use of my Dremel and I knocked off half of it. Now it fits in there and like that. Now, how to keep it in place? Well, we're gonna use a glue gun for that. Ah, hot, ow. And that should be fine. There's a couple of other things that we've done while we were here right after closing. The first one is change the locks. That is a very important step. I tried a new uh, source for locks this year. I tried Amazon Basics and they actually worked out really well. I was really pleased with how easy they were to install and, and they were really good value. So we did the front door and the back door with those as soon as we closed. Second thing of course is obviously clean, especially the bathrooms and things like that, they needed to be cleaned. Oh, yeah. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to spray for bugs because it's just, there's spider webs and all kinds of insects all over the place. So I'm using this product here, it's called Tempo SC. I found this because I had my house professionally sprayed at one point and this was the product that they used. So the other thing I'm using is a sprayer. This is from Sprayers Plus. This is a, a battery powered sprayer that they sent me to try out for a review and I never got a chance to do the review, but this is as good a time as any. Uh, it is charged up and I'm going to put two gallons of water in it and I guess 16 milliliters of tempo. Now, Tempo, this bottle, uh, I guess it was about $40, if that. It's a very strong concentrate that professionals use. I'll put a link to it in the video description, but you can see I bought this in 2011, so it's 2019. This is eight years old, and uh, I think I've used maybe three quarters of it, so. Now, when you have multiple sprayers in the house, or even if you don't, it's a good idea to always label what you put in a sprayer. So that way, you don't forget. And I also, if I need to, I can just peel it off and put a new one on. I actually sprayed around the entire perimeter of the house as well as inside the house too. Every room around the baseboards and in the corners of the ceilings too. All right, that'll do it for this episode of The Living Flip. Thanks for coming with us. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. If you'd like to win one of several official Living Flip hats, complete with a Handy Dad TV button, please be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and leave a comment below. Thanks.